In this video we are going to fix a TV bracket to a solid wall. A solid wall can be any wall which is not a stud partition wall. This includes a chimney breast or a wall that has been dot and dabbed. TVs are expensive and can be heavy so it's essential that it is fixed to the wall properly. The footage in this video is from several TV brackets that I have installed over the years to try and make the clearest video possible. When you're fixing to walls, it helps if you know how the wall is constructed. So if you do a simple test, if you just tap it, that sounds hollow. But this is actually the external wall of a property. And I happen to know that that is actually block on the other side of it. So what they've done is they've actually glued the plasterboard to this wall using a drywall adhesive. So if you keep tapping it and moving, eventually you'll find a bit that sounds solid which is just there, and that is where one of the dabs of adhesive is. So if you keep tapping around the wall, you will find spots like that, which don't make a noise when you tap on them. Obviously, if you're gonna fix this bracket to a wall like that, you would have to use some special fixings. I will put some links in the description to some suitable fixings for that. We've already had a hanging bracket on this wall. This was for a smaller TV than this and that was a cantilever one, so that is obviously to one side. So the new bracket is gonna fit somewhere about there. This particular wall is a solid wall, which has been plastered, and at the back of there, it is actually thermalite. I do know this because I've actually drilled it in the past for the other bracket. When you're drilling thermalite, it is very soft and you don't actually need hammer action on. You can do it quite easily with a drill with no hammer action. You can buy special brackets and it is important that you get the correct one for the TV that you are hanging. You now need to position the bracket where you want the TV. If it's going onto a chimney breast, it would normally be installed in the dead center at a suitable height. The advantage of fixing a TV to a disused chimney breast is that you can hide the cables in the chimney by drilling holes through using a core drill. In this example, a precast flue has been drilled so that the cables can be concealed. Never fix a TV to a chimney breast if the fire is still in use, as the heat may affect the TV. So I'm gonna put the bracket where we want it to be, and in this instance, it needs to be about there. So I'm just gonna mark one of the top fixing holes. And then we can move the bracket, we can drill that, and then we can put one fixing in there until we get it level and adjust it slightly before we drill the other holes. I'm now just gonna tape a envelope below that using some masking tape, and that will collect all of the drill dust. Now I'm just gonna put on a pair of safety glasses we're then just gonna take one of the plugs that supplied the unit. We're gonna get a drill bit, and we're just gonna get that to the correct length. And then we're just gonna put a piece of tape on there and that'll show us what depth we need to drill to. Obviously, before you go drilling into the wall, you need to ensure that there are no cables or pipes running in it. And it's very unlikely. I've actually checked this wall and there are no sockets in this vicinity below. So it's highly unlikely that there's gonna be a cable in there but it's always best to check with a cable detector. Once we've done that, we can then insert the plug. I'm then gonna remove the envelope. We can then take the bracket, and line that up with the hole, and insert the first fixing screw. We don't need to go mad with that because we just need to get it level and mark the other fixing holes. Now I'm not sure if you noticed this or not, but this wall isn't actually straight 
we've got it touching at this end but at this end we've actually got a gap it's actually that big of a gap that I could actually get my finger behind it so if we were to put the bolts in there and pull that to the wall it would actually bend the bracket so we don't want to do that so we're going to have to put some washers behind in between the bracket and the wall otherwise when you tighten up the bolts it's simply going to bend the bracket you can see that we've got that level but just to be on the safe side I'm just going to check it using my spirit level and you can see that that is actually level it's always best to check in case that is actually faulty so I'm now going to mark five more fixing holes and we need them to be far apart you don't want to choose them too close together so I'm going to choose there so I'm now just going to undo the screw in the middle there that will enable me to turn this we can then just turn that out of the way until we do the drilling If you drill through the plaster and the dust is grey in colour and you can drill it without using hammer action it means that your wall could be built using thermalite blocks or aerated concrete. If this is the case I would recommend using the DeWalt gas baton fixings. I'll put a link in the description or check the instructions with your fixing kit to ensure the supplied fixings are suitable for aerated concrete. This is a wall built from brick. You can see that I'm starting off the drill without hammer action until I get through the plaster. Then switch on the hammer action. This ensures that the drill hole is in the right position. It also does not damage the plaster, which can be a problem in some older properties. Some bricks are difficult to drill, so a SDS drill is preferred. Once all holes have been drilled, you can insert the wall plugs. I can now push this screw through the fixing hole and put the washers on it. This is a little bit fiddly but it does have to be done. Once we've got them washers in there we can then push that in the hole and that will stop them from falling off. Like so. That is a bit of a fiddly job. So for the bottom I've got five washers. So again I'm going to push the bolt through, ensure I get all five washers at the back there and then push that into the plug. Now that we've done that we just need to tighten up all of the screws. To access the holes on this you simply pop out those covers like so and then that actually gives you the fixing holes for the brackets. You do get quite a lot of fixing bolts with this for all the different makes of TV. So you should ensure that you have got plenty of fixings. There's also spaces in there in case the back of your TV is not straight. So that's a screw for fixing it to the TV. We've then got the star washer and then the normal washer. 
This has got plenty of fixing holes. We need to determine which hole we're going to use and I've actually counted them and the top needs to be in seven. So I can put that in there and then we can screw that into the top fixing hole. At the bottom we've simply got a slot so that can go straight in there. And then screw them all the way in, ensuring that they are tight. I should now be able to lift that up and leave the base stand behind. Now that all the cables are plugged in, it's simply a case of lifting it onto the bracket. If you find that your TV is a little bit on the large side, it is a bit heavy, it is a good idea to get somebody to give you a lift doing this. Now what we need to do is secure that to the wall using this piece of steel. This just slides in underneath the brackets and that will prevent it from being lifted off the wall without removing this first. I hope you found this video useful. If you have and you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel.